Sometimes things go wrong, and through no fault of your own, you lose your drone. This happened to one of my subscribers last week, who contacted me pretty upset to say the very least, not only losing his drone into a lake, but being presented with an even higher care of fresh excess to pay for a replacement because he couldn't return the drone itself. Nightmare. But with a good ending, because after loads of emails between him and myself, extracting the flight logs and looking at exactly what went wrong, including all the error messages that came up just before the crash, he was able to present the evidence to DJI and has now had it confirmed that a free replacement, Mini 4 Pro, is on its way to him. So, brilliant result. But he had no idea how easy it was to extract the information and play it back and see exactly what went wrong. Now, sooner or later, it's possible you too will have something go wrong in flight. So whilst I did a video the other week on how to avoid losing your drone and retake control if something goes wrong mid-flight, today's video is on how to find out what went wrong and crucially work out whether it was your fault or a drone malfunction. And of course, how to get the most out of DJI's Care Refresh if you took that out when you bought your drone. Because it's too easy to sleepwalk into making use of the Care Refresh option to get a quick replacement after the crash. Just paying the excess and getting your pride and joy replaced in just a few days. It's very, very tempting. You only get two goes with Care Refresh though, and to me, why pay any excess if you don't have to? And in this case, initially the drone pilot was prompted with this from DJI, and you need to read it carefully because when you first raise a case with DJI, they mention the £219 excess for Care Refresh fresh in the event of a flyaway where you can't return the main body of the drone. But you can see below that, it explains why there's a higher price for a flyaway, but how it will give you a faster service for a replacement back in your hands in a much quicker time frame. So as I said, it's very easy just to take that option and be happy you're getting a replacement for just £219. But you need to take a closer look at the text below, because further down, they also talk about offering free data analysis, to see whether the situation warrants a free replacement. It then goes on with a whole load of instructions on synchronizing uh, your flight logs, generating a QR code and completing a flyaway report. It's easy to feel overwhelmed and skip, but it's actually this step that can be the key to getting a free replacement drone instead of having to pay the excess and use up one of your care refresh allowances. Because in this case, after we'd taken a closer look at what happened and submitted to DJI, as I said, they agreed it was actually the fault of the drone and hence the free replacement. So great result. and actually really easy to get if you genuinely believe the drone was at fault. But we need to be pretty clear here, the flight logs record pretty much every element of what's going on with the drone when it's in flight. If it really was your fault, it will probably show up in the logs. But conversely, if it was drone error and a malfunction, then hopefully that will show up too. So first off, you need to take a look at your flight logs itself. Now, uh, these are little data files that your remote will store each time you make a flight. If you're using your phone connected to an RCN type remote, then the files are stored on the phone itself. But either way, DJI support will often refer to the flight logs that are visible when you connect your remote to your computer and run the DJI Assist program. These are DAT files, and they will give you a basic replay of what happened. But you can also make use of a second set of flight logs, which are actually TXT files, and are located in a different directory on your phone or remote. And these TXT files are crucial, as they're what you upload to a third-party flight viewer like airdata.com. Now, airdata, they're a very good outfit. They have free options and in-depth instructions on how to find and upload your TXT flight log files. Pick the last file that covers your particular flight. Then upload it to airdata.com where you can then not only replay the flight in all its glory and gore, but you can also look at the error logs and, and error messages and see what was happening when things went wrong. So in our friend's case, he assured me the flight was made in calm weather with no overhead obstructions. And just as it was coming into land, it suddenly lost control and spun hopelessly down until it fell into the lake. And of course, it was pretty much lost forever then absolutely gutting. Poor lad, understandably miffed, especially as he was so sure he'd done nothing wrong. You can see all hell breaks loose at 5.14, where loads of error messages start popping up, primarily about a blocked motor and loads of messages about the aircraft rolling sharply to the left or pitching sharply forward and lots of sensing errors. In fact, there are over 70 errors logged in the remaining flight, which only lasts seven seconds after that first error absolutely crazy, 70 errors as it spins to its watery grave in just seven seconds. 
So that's why being able to get your flight logs out can help you so much. Even if it's your fault, then you can at least play the flight log back and see where it went wrong and learn from your mistakes. But in our friend's case, he was able to compile the email outlining the evidence and showing that it wasn't his fault. And within less than a day, sure enough, DJI came back confirming that it was drone failure and was shipping out that replacement. Galling to have lost it, but at least there's a replacement coming free of charge. And it's not immediately obvious that there is that route you can take to get there. So if you do end up losing it or crashing, then make sure you take a look at what happened before you agree to pay that care refresh excess and use up one of your uh, replacement goes. Crucially, if you think it is a drone malfunction, then make sure you ask for full data analysis and present them with the extra evidence to help show that it wasn't your fault and hopefully you'll get a good result. Keep in mind there's also a video cache of uh, the flight that you can also download and show. Showing stills or, from the, or even a short clip of the video can also help and add more to your case. Again, when the RC is connected to your computer, just navigate to the folder for video cache and you'll see video files in 720 resolution, which is still good enough to play back and see what happened. So there you go, uh, that's it, super quick one today. Look, I'll put a link to my video from the other week on trying to avoid crashes and flyaways in the first place, which is obviously, it's always better to avoid trouble than try and get out of it. Uh, but also the video does cover what to do if things are going wrong in flight and you realize that your drone is struggling too much with the wind and being blown away. So I'll do a link to that up there. But for now, look, if this has helped as ever, smash a little thumb up button for me, drop a line below, give me any incidents, good or bad, that you have had yourself, always good to learn from other people but either way as I head over to the USA for a few weeks I'm having fun Arizona Utah and New Mexico coming so you can keep up with things on my Instagram at Ian in London till next time have fun happy flying